work for one two by four. And here we see Miss Ellie dismantling some pallets to get the wood out. She's using a crowbar and a hammer, which are types of levers. This is a chainsaw. The chainsaw is a compound machine. It is composed of many simple machines. We're going to look at a couple of them. The actual saw part of the chainsaw is a chain with little teeth attached to it, which are wedges. A wedge is an inclined plane that moves. These do the cutting. Part of the chainsaw we're concerned with at the moment is the part that starts the chainsaw. The chainsaw has a pulley that wraps around a wheel and axle. When you pull the pulley, it makes the wheel and axle turn. The axle on the wheel and axle makes the piston go up and down, which is what starts the engine. Miss Ellie is going to demonstrate the pulley for you. Hi, I'm Jack from Lashay Wax. Well, let's let show you how to just kind of pull like this. And if you're a real man, you can pull really hard. But if you're a wimpy woman like me, because I have no balance, I can't pull it. This okay. pulls out. Okay, now Mr. Pickett's going to demonstrate starting the chainsaw. Chainsaws are very dangerous, so we have to wear the special chainsaw helmet and chainsaw glasses when we play with the chainsaw. I am now going to start the chainsaw by pulling on the pulley that turns the wheel and axle that makes the piston go up and down. So, we choke it, we make sure it's on, and it'll start right up. Soon it will. They always start eventually. And I'm sure it's going to start any second now. The point of a nail is a wedge. Wedge is an inclined plane that moves. The head of the nail, which is wider than the tip of the nail, receives a large force. The entire large force gets transmitted to the tiny little point of the nail, which allows the nail to drive through the wood. Jossie's playing the finishing touches on the floor of the barn by driving in the last few nails. Whoops! Once again, Jossie's playing in the finishing touches on the floor by driving in the last few nails. The hammer is working as a third-class lever. Whoops! The hammer is working as a third-class lever, and the nail is working as a wedge. As you can see, the nail easily goes into the wood because the nail is a wedge. Jossie's pointing roughly at where the fulcrum of this lever is. It's all the way at the end of the system. Now his finger is pointing at where the input force is being applied to the handle. Now Jossie's pointing at where the output force of the lever system is. It's a third class lever because the output force is all the way at one end. The input force is between the output force and the fulcrum. The fulcrum is all the way at the wrist. Now that we have a floor in the barn, we're out collecting hay to put in the barn. That was the point, having the floor. Loading hay bales is one of the places where people don't use simple machines. These husky young fellows are loading them by hand. They're lifting the little square bales one by one and loading them on the truck. And the guy on the truck lifts them up. There's no tools involved at all. This is Jossie. He's going to demonstrate how we lift a hay bale. Notice, there are no levers involved. Now he's carrying the hay bale to the wagon. Notice once again, there are no <laughs> levers involved. What do you think about this kind of work? I love it. Because moving the square bales is so cumbersome and kind of labor intensive, some clever person invented this little device. 
which instead of turning out the old-fashioned square bales, turns out a modern round bale. In the distance over here, you can see some round bales in the field. You won't see anybody picking these up because they're too big to pick up by hand. They're lifted with a tractor. This dangerous looking device is actually the little thing they put on the front of the tractor to lift the round bales. The tractor has kind of a little hydraulic lifter on the front. They attach the pointy thing to the lifter, drive it in the middle of the round bale, carry it to the barn, and stack the round bales in a nice big neat pile. Here we are in the barn. These round bales were stacked entirely using the tractor. So, they're rolled up with a device attached to the back of the tractor, lifted out of the field with the tractor, stacked with the tractor. Human hands don't have to touch the round bale at all. It's a lot faster and easier process than the old square bales. And here we have the load of hay back at the barn. Jossie is unloading the bales. Notice once again you do this by hand. There are no simple machines involved. I could put some music to this part. Miss Ellie is picking the bale up and placing it on the sack. Here comes another bale and another one. Miss Ellie is lifting the second bale onto the sack. Jossie has found one simple machine he can use here. He's using a hoe to pull the hay bales out of the wagon. Hay rake. Hay rake. A hay rake, yes. He is using a hay rake. Now, students, what's he using it as? What kind of simple machine is this? It's a lever. I'm not using anything right now as a tool. Using I'm using a hay bale as a stool. All right, yes. And why do you have that thing around your nose, Miss Ellie? <laughs> because I can't stand breathing hay dust. She's okay. banding on a fire. <laughs> what he's actually doing, not when he's pulling that it's working as a lever. I'll do it again. He's swinging the lever. When he swings the lever, that'd be like a third-class lever. And he's driving a wedge in the hay bale, which is the prongs on the end of the hoe. So we have a combination lever and wedge. So, Miss Ellie, why did we do all this hay stuff? Well, horses feed on hay. Hay is for horses. Anyway. In the summertime, you have plenty of green grass for the horses, and even in spring. But in the wintertime, sometimes you can have long cold spells where there's nothing for the horses to forage on. The reason most horse people use square bales instead of round bales is that um, it's easier for one person to handle a, round, a square bale rather than a round bale. You have to have a tractor to carry a round bale. I think a round bale is the equivalent of 14 square bales between 8 and 14 square bales. Okay, thank you.